My husband left the responsibilities of taking care of his own father and all the housework to me and hangs out until dawn every day without giving me enough living expenses. He asked me to dedicate my time to the care of my sick father in law. I quit my job as a nurse, which I loved, and devoted myself to him. And yet, Are you asking me for money again? We can't live on such a small amount again this month. It's your job to make ends meet within the budget. But there is a limit, you know. This is impossible. You are all talk and do nothing. Who actually brings money here? My husband, who had shoved me away, looked down at me and smirked. You are only eating money instead of making it. You are like a parasite. How dare you? If I leave you, you won't be able to survive. At best, you should flatter me so that I don't throw you away. I can divorce you anytime I want, you see? He flaunted papers in front of my face. He threw them at me and walked out of the living room. I picked the scattered paper up and spread them out on the floor. Unintentionally, my mouth made a smile when I saw the title Petition for Divorce. He believed that I was the one to suffer from the split. Not at all. I was not surprised since he wasn't aware of something important. How pathetic. I dialed the lawyer's number as I stared at the papers. My name is Michelle. I was a nurse at a private hospital. It was a tough job, with night shift and many days without breaks. Being a nurse had been my dream since I was a little girl. I found it as rewarding as it was hard. I truly loved my job. Although my husband Ryan and I seldom saw each other due to our busy schedules, we never had friction, and our marriage somehow carried on smoothly. My life changed drastically after an incident. One day, my father-in-law, Ryan's only living family member, suddenly became incapacitated. He was living alone at that time and was no longer able to take care of himself. He needed nursing care. Of course, Ryan was worried about him and asked me to take care of him. He told me that he would work harder, so he wanted me to quit my job and devote myself to caring for my father-in-law. I suggested we take advantage of the many convenient nursing care services available those days. He worried that his father would feel too uncomfortable having a stranger take care of him. I didn't want to quit my job, but my father-in-law was always very good to me. I well knew that his personality was too considerate of others. I understood Ryan's concern and finally decided to leave my job after much consideration. He also promised to help me with the housework as much as possible. I was sure that we were able to handle the new living arrangement. Things went well at first when we started living with my father-in-law. Ryan kept his promise and helped me around the house. Although the money we could spend was not much, we just needed to live modestly to get by. As time went on, Ryan became lazier and less helpful and gave me less money. When a year passed, not only did he stop helping me completely, but started spending his salary as he wanted. He didn't make a lot of money to begin with. Our incomes were cut in half when I quit my job, and we were in a financially difficult situation. In between taking care of my father-in-law, I looked for cheap groceries and had to drive far out to buy them. When Ryan wasn't around, I ate as simply as possible. I couldn't afford to buy new clothes or go to the hairdresser. When the living became too tight, I asked Ryan for help, but he always got annoyed with the word money. Hey honey, about the living expenses this month. I gave you the money already. Yes, but it's less than last month. I can't make ends meet with that. Are you kidding me? It's your job to manage within the budget. But it's too small. After I quit my job, it's been a constant struggle. Please put more in the house. 
What the hell? It's my hard-earned money. How I spend it is up to me. I won't stop you from spending it. I'm asking to at least give me enough to live on. You're talking all high and mighty. Just because you are a nurse, you still think you are so important. You may have made good money in the past, but now you are employed. You are a parasite that doesn't make any money. All you have to do is be quiet and do as I say. When I gave him a hard time, he became so infuriated that I could not handle him. No matter how much I pleaded, I could not get him to increase the amount. I had to take up my own savings from when I was working. I was exhausted from worrying about the critical financial situation every month and from listening to Ryan's verbal abuse. Even in the middle of all this, my father-in-law always thanked me for even the smallest of things. He knew that we were having a hard time making ends meet and tried to give me his pension. He was a really nice man and my only emotional support. Ryan's attitude and life, in general, were difficult to handle, but I enjoyed spending time with my father-in-law. I thought that if he was there for me, I was going to do my best. However, my only happiness was easily taken away. Nearly two years after I began caring for him, he suddenly passed away. That day, I was at the supermarket a little farther away because there was a special sale. I had gone out in the morning. I was worried about him, but he was doing well and even told me not to worry with a smile. I went out with peace of mind. While I was out, he collapsed and never came back. I was devastated that I blamed myself many times for leaving him. I regretted it over and over again, and no matter how much I cried, my tears never dried up. I couldn't dwell on my grief forever. It was time to prepare for his funeral. Ryan had served as a chief mourner, but only in public. He had forced me to do almost all of the preparations. It was the funeral of my father-in-law, who had been a great help to me. I would have rather done it all myself than had Ryan do the wrong thing. I did as I was told and made all the arrangements. Since it was a sudden event, nothing had been prepared in advance. I devoted every waking moment to it. I was so busy that my head felt like spinning. It helped me to snap out of the depression, so it was good for me after all. It would be a lie to say that I was not irritated by Ryan who yelled at me, and when he was satisfied he watched the TV without helping me. I still tried to do my best for my father-in-law. The attendees, however, expressed their sympathy for Ryan. No wonder. They didn't know our internal affairs, but I was at my limit. It was so sudden, it must have been hard to prepare. No, this is nothing. Just before he passed away, he required nursing care, wasn't he? You took really good care of him. He's my father who raised me, so I didn't think it was hard. With such a fine son, I'm sure he will be able to go to heaven in peace. I hope so too. I'm sure he appreciates you all for coming today. Thank you. Ryan wore a fake smile and chatted with attendees in a friendly manner. The details of the conversation made me sick, and I had the urge to start cursing him out. He did absolutely nothing to prepare for the funeral or to take care of his father. There were days when he didn't even try to check on him. I couldn't forget how sad his father looked when he kept coming home late at night and didn't exchange a single word with him for days. And yet, the moment he was gone, Ryan acted like a good son. I couldn't help but feel disgusted. Once I got the feeling of dislike for him, it was very difficult to erase it. Even after the funeral, I couldn't get rid of the distaste. Since my father-in-law was gone, there was no need to continue living with him. Divorce. The word crossed my mind. I pondered if it was the right thing to do. I was still in doubt, 
but my revulsion for him was growing day by day, and it never disappeared. I was still procrastinating on what to do. I couldn't make up my mind, even though I was feeling the limits of my married life. It was just out of habit that kept me going through each day as before. Then something happened by chance. When I went to the local supermarket in the evening, the seasoning I wanted was out of stock. I decided to go to another one a little farther away. I bought what I wanted, and when I came out of the shop, I saw Ryan, who was supposed to be at work. I thought about calling out to him, but he was acting strangely. I decided to watch him from afar. He looked around and then disappeared into a building. There was a large sign above the door that he walked into. The name of a consumer finance company I had heard of was written on it. As soon as I saw it, my entire body went cold. It felt like I was placed in a freezer all of a sudden. I thought it was what it meant to have one's blood drained from the body. On the contrary, my mind was strangely calm and clear. Not only did he not pay me enough living expenses, but he also borrowed money without telling me. I wondered how long and how much he had been in debt. I decided to get a divorce at that moment. I couldn't live with such a man any longer. I felt my feelings for him rapidly cooling down. My feelings, which had been almost nothing, melted away like snow. That day, I waited in the living room until he came home. It was dawn when he finally showed up. Morning, Ham. You're back late. Yikes! What are you doing so early? What's wrong if I was awake? Nothing. What's going on? I want to go to sleep. Of course you do. You have been hanging out until now. If you are being sarcastic, save it for another time. I'm tired from working unlike you. Oh, right. I'm sorry. I have something important to tell you. What? Let's get a divorce. Huh? What are you saying all of a sudden? I have been thinking about it. What the hell? You are living off me. How are you going to survive after the divorce? I mean, you don't give me enough money to live on, so a divorce won't make a difference. Right. You are an angel in white. You are a nurse. You can live without me. Is that it? If you insist so much, I will divorce you. Let's go and see a lawyer later this morning. He locked himself in the bedroom after that. He took a day off and took me to see a lawyer as he said. He signed the divorce petition and slammed it down on the desk in front of me. Thus, we were more easily separated than I had expected. Ryan kept mumbling that it was too late to regret it, but I ignored him. I decided to return to my parents for the time being. When I explained the situation to them, they offered to help me, so I took their word for it. I immediately started packing up my belongings in the house. While I was at it, I also cleaned my father-in-law's room and found his will in a chest of drawers. I told Ryan, who seemed more delighted than I had expected. He opened the envelope with great enthusiasm. When he finished reading it, he repeatedly mumbled it was a mistake. I peeked in from beside him and understood that there was nothing he had expected written on it. The will stated that the several stocks his father owned were bequeathed to me. It also enclosed a long, long letter of thanks to me. No, this is not true. Oh my god. Normally, I, the only son, inherit everything, don't I? That may be so, but the will says, You've got to be kidding me. This is ridiculous. But the will says, This is invalid. It has your father's signature on it. It was such a shock to him. He suddenly fainted and collapsed on the floor. I called an ambulance, but I felt like I was already a stranger to him, so I left the rest to the paramedics. He was taken to the hospital. 
I didn't think there was a need for me to wait for his return. So I packed up the rest of my belongings and left for my parents' house. Sometime later, when my life had settled down, I went to inform Ryan's relative, who had been kind to me about the divorce. When she heard my story, she was very sympathetic and gave me a warm hug. When I had finished talking, she looked at me awkwardly, as if she was ashamed, and then she finally spoke in a hushed voice. Ryan had run up a large gambling debt behind my back. That was before we moved in with his father, and had been so since shortly after we were married. His love of gambling and his frequent trips to consumer finance companies had become a rumor in the small community. I felt ashamed that I had no idea why other people knew and gossiped about it. I was too busy with work before moving in with my father-in-law, and afterward, I had no time for anything other than taking care of him. Moreover, Ryan had been telling people that he could pay off his debts with his father's inheritance right away. He had no doubt about it. The rumor must have reached his father from somewhere. Knowing that, he made his will. Ryan, who had been borrowing money in various places without care, relied on his inheritance. When he found out that he was getting nothing, he fainted with shock. He was released from the hospital in no time and returned home. Now, he needs to pay off his debts himself and is living from hand to mouth. I, on the other hand, went back to my parents and took a break for a while. Now, I am back to work as a nurse. My days are as busy as ever. I'm happy to have the work I love once again. I don't want to think about marriage for a while. Instead, I want to focus on my job and put my effort into it.